we have two different windrows. One of them has a lot of food waste in it. One of them is pretty much woody debris. And looking at these two, which one is going to decompose faster? Is it going to be this woody debris or is it going to be the food waste? And if you're thinking it's the food waste, you would be correct. Food waste is in some ways a great feedstock to compost because it decomposes really, really fast. Um, there's a lot of energy and it's just kind of taking the entire composting process and compressing it down. And when you think about what happens when something decomposes, like imagine an apple or this orange here decomposing, it, sh oops, it shrinks over time. So as it decomposes, the water, the juices and things fall out of it and it shrinks. So what does this mean if you are, have a pile that's, you know, 50% apples and 50% um, coarse wood like this? It means after maybe five or 10 days, all your apples will have shrunk down and your pile's gonna fall. It's gonna decrease in size. So when you're composting food waste, you have what is called settling, which is where the pile or rotting loss, which is where the pile actually shrinks as the material decomposes. And this can be pretty significant, um, like 30, 40% reduction in volume, which is a lot. And as you can imagine, as this volume reduces, oftentimes the material is getting denser as well, because you aren't necessarily, it's not like what's being reduced is just disappearing. Some of it is, but not all of it. And you're taking a lot of these pores that you had in the material where the air was channeling and promoting composting conditions, and you're shrinking those down. So the whole pile gets denser, it gets harder to aerate, and when you're composting food waste, this happens faster. So there's <clears throat> different ways to deal with it. One is forced aeration. Um, but going back to the example of the fellow that was doing 12 weeks of extended ASP, what was happening is they had gotten their blowers sized so that they could deliver air pretty well for the first month or so. But after that pile had settled a lot, the material was too dense and it was having a really, really hard time moving air through it. So then when they tried to turn that material, boom, lots of odor emissions. So you want to just be aware of this. And typically if you're composting mixes with a large amount of food waste, you're going to need to do some sort of reflowing or turning process. Um, and certain places in Europe have actually written this into the law. So if you're composting food waste, you have to turn the material like three or four times during the process for it to actually be considered a finished compost. And this is regardless of the technology you're doing, it's just required. So hopefully that makes sense. It's an important point with food waste um, composting. And I guess one other thing, looking at these two things. When you think of like the microbes that are breaking the stuff down, you can kind of think of your own body. And like if you ate a piece of wood, that's not gonna digest very well. Whereas if you eat an orange, that's gonna digest really, really quickly. And similar things are happening in the compost pile where you'll, this orange, it's gonna digest really, really fast. Whereas this wood, it's not going to digest fast and it actually needs more of the fungal elements to break down over time, which usually come in the curing, curing stages of composting. So if you are trying to figure out your compost recipe um, or you're having odor issues or um, really leachate issues or any of these kind of common issues with food waste composting, it's always good to come back to your recipe and think about, okay, what am I putting in here? Am I getting the right mix of carbon to nitrogen, do I have the right bulk density? Uh, is my moisture content right coming in? And we have a tool online called Compost Calculator that's free and you guys are welcome to use it. And it basically helps you make these decisions. So if you had say 100 tons a day of food waste, how many wood chips should you add into it? Or maybe you don't have wood chips, how much shredded cardboard, so on and so forth. So it can get you thinking about compost recipes and how to get them into the green here.